So let's begin by asking you to find the sine and cosine of the following angles. So find the sine and cosine of 45 degrees. So I'm going to draw that 45 degree angle here in standard position. Notice that one of my rays lies on the x-axis and the vertice is there at the origin. If I trace up along that 45 degree line, it's going to be pointing to that root 2 over 2 value for sine and cosine. They're both right here. This right here, value 1, this would be the cosine, and this value 2 would be the sine. That's the x and y coordinate of this point that lies right here on the edge of that circle. Now I'm going to show you in this problem how to arrive at those exact values without just putting in the sine of 45 or the cosine of 45 in your calculator. What happens if I draw a line straight down from where that point lies on the edge of the circle? What values do we know here? Well we know that this creates a 90 degree angle right here on the bottom and we're dealing with a triangle now. This triangle shaded right here. Now I can use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for the missing sides. I also know that this side, the hypotenuse of this right triangle, has a value of 1 because the radius of the unit circle is 1 and that's the distance from the center right here to the outside edge of the circle. I also know that this is a 45 degree angle. Alright, remember what you know about special right triangles. When you're dealing with a 45-45-90 special right triangle, so I'll draw a little example over here. This is your 90, and these two angles are going to be 45 degrees each. The arbitrary values for the sides are x, x, and x times root 2. So compare that to our triangle here. Well, we know that our value x root 2 is equivalent to 1. So I'm going to set 1 equal to x root 2 and we're going to solve for the value of x. Well, if I want to solve for the value of x, I need to divide off that root 2 on both sides of the equation. On the left-hand side, we have 1 over root 2. On the right-hand side, the root 2's have canceled each other, and we just have x. But remember that we can't have a square root on a denominator of a fraction. So what I need to do is multiply by root 2 over root 2. When you do that, on top, you're going to get root 2 times 1, which is root 2. And on bottom, you're going to get root 2 times root 2, which is the square root of 4. And the square root of 4 is simply 2. So for this value, x is equal to the square root of 2 over 2. So both sides of this triangle here have a value of root 2 over 2. Now notice that the sides of this triangle are the height of the triangle, referring to this height right here, that's the distance from the base on the x-axis up to that point where we join the circle right here, and we're also referring to the length of that triangle from the origin out to where it makes a 90 degree angle. So this length right here. So both those sides happen to be root 2 over root 2. So that's where we got these values from right here. So all the values here of x and y that are derived, all these points along the unit circle, happen to just deal with special right triangles. 30, 60, 90 right triangles and 45, 45, 90 right triangles. So you'll notice that all the angles here around the unit circle happen to be either values of 30 degrees or 45 degrees. So look at this first angle. It's a 30 degree angle here in standard position. That's a 30, 60, 90 right triangle. The next value is 45 degrees. That's a 45, 45, 90 right triangle. Then you've got a 60 degree angle. That's part of the 30, 60, 90 right triangle. Then you've got a 90 degree angle just straight up, which is just value of 1 right there when we go straight up or straight to the left or right or down. Then you've got a 120 degree angle. Well that 120 degree angle is just another 30, 60, 90. 
120 degrees is just 30 degrees past 90. So you're dealing with a 30, 60, 90. That 135 degree angle is just 45 degrees past 90, so you're dealing with a 45, 45, 90, and so on and so forth. So now let's go ahead and take a look at that second angle, that 210 degree angle. I'm going to go ahead and draw it here in standard position. And remember, we're trying to find the sine and cosine of that angle, 210 degrees. Now you could look at this and say, well obviously the x-coordinate here is the cosine and the y-coordinate is the sine. Bam, we're done. It's negative root 3 over 2 and negative 1 half. But remember, I'm going to teach you how to get those exact values as opposed to just putting that into your calculator, the sine and cosine of 210, and solving for your answer. So the first thing we want to do is draw a right triangle. And we always draw, from that point on the circle, we take a straight line down to the x-axis, no matter where the x-axis happens to be in relation to that angle. So we're going to draw that 90 degree angle in right here. Now notice that 210 degrees is just 30 degrees past 180. So now we're dealing with a 30, 60, 90 right triangle. So I'll draw that in over here. Here's your standard 30, 60, 90 degree right triangle. And remember that the arbitrary values for these 30, 60, 90s, the value across from the 30 degree is x, the value across from the 60 degree angle is x root 3, and the value across from the 90 degree angle is 2 times x. So that value across from the 90 degree angle is the hypotenuse here. And the value across the 90 degree angle of the triangle we're dealing with has a value of 1, remember? Because it's the distance from the origin of the circle out to the edge of the circle, so it's the radius. And the unit circle always has a radius of 1. So, for our triangle here, our arbitrary value 2x we know is equivalent to the value 1 in our unit circle. And we want to solve for x because that will give us the two remaining sides on this 30, 60, 90. So to solve for x, I'm just going to divide by 2 on both sides. On the left, the 2's cancel and we have x, and on the right, we have 1 half. So if you plug that back into our 30, 60, 90, this side right here, x, has a value of 1 half, and this side, x root 3, has a value of 1 half root 3, which is just the root 3 divided by 2. So, that short side across from the 30 degree angle has a value of 1 half. Now notice that that's down below the x-axis, so on our graph that's a negative 1 half because we're going down 1 half point. And the value across from our 60 degree angle, so this is our 60, that value has a value of root 3 over 2. And notice that's going to the left on the x-axis. So going to the left on the x-axis means it's a negative. So we have a negative root 3 over 2 for the x-coordinate distance. That's the distance along the x-axis. Then if you go down to that point right here on the edge of the circle, we go down half a unit. So our value is negative 1 half. So you can just find the sine and cosine by looking at the unit circle. That's what all the values around the unit circle are. You can also find the sine and cosine by just plugging that into your calculator, the sine of 45 degrees or the cosine of 45 degrees. And you can also use this method with the right triangles in the Pythagorean theorem to find the exact value of sine and cosine on the unit circle. In the future, you'll learn how to take the tangent of these angles. The tangent value can be arrived at by just taking the value of sine, so let's say that of 30 degrees, so that our sine value is 1 half, and dividing by the cosine value, which is root 3 over 2. So if you took the tangent of 30 degrees and put that into your calculator, it would be the exact same answer as 1 half divided by root 3 over 2. And we'll discuss that as it gets a little bit more complex in dealing with the unit circle. Now I'm going to show you one last value here that's written down on the unit circle. And that's these values here, these pi over root 3, pi over 4, pi over 6, and so on around the circle. 
Those are the radian values of the circumference of the circle from this point right here to that point along the circle. So for example, the distance from that point down on the bottom to this point here up top has a value of pi over 6 radian units. Now remember, if you wanted to solve for the circumference of a circle, you'd use the equation 2 times pi times the radius. Well, the unit circle has a radius of one unit. So, the circumference of the circle, C, has a value of just 2 pi, and the circumference is the distance around the circle. Well, we start our measurement right here at the coordinate 1, comma 0. So notice that if you went halfway around the circle, so all the way along the circle here, to this point right here, that's half the circle, the top set half of the circle. And the value in radian units is just pi, because half of 2 pi is 1 pi. If you went a quarter of the way around the circle, so if you just traveled from that original origin point up to here to the 90 degree angle, a quarter of the way around the circle is 1 fourth of 2 pi. So 2 pi over 4, and 2 over 4 reduces to 1 over 2, so we have half of pi, or pi over 2. Now the easiest way to find any of these is just the formula, your degrees times pi over 180. So for example, let's take a weird one. Let's take 240 degrees here. So we'll do 240, which is our number of degrees, times pi over 180 degrees. So we have 240 pi over 180. So we're dividing, so we can just drop this 0, and we have 24 over 18, which is a fraction of 4 over 3. So this reduces to 4 pi over 3. And you'll notice that's the answer here for the distance around the circle. 4 pi over 3, so that's the distance from that origin point there, 1 comma 0, all the way until you arrive right here. Now this is important because later you're going to be given word problems, like somebody rides a ferris wheel and they go three quarters of a rotation around the ferris wheel, and the ferris wheel has a diameter of 25 meters, and they want you to solve for how far they've traveled in a circle. Well, you're going to use this exact formula, the number of degrees they've traveled. So if they went three quarters of the way around the circle, three quarters of 360 degrees is 270 degrees. So they went three quarters of the way around, and the circle now has a diameter of 25 meters, and so on and so forth. And you'll use that to solve for the actual distance traveled. And it's going to be problems like Ferris wheel problems, or bicycle wheel problems, or gears in a, a car, or whatnot. And you're going to be solving for how many rotations, or how many how far that gear or wheel or whatnot has traveled in doing those rotations. So remember that these core values on the center of the unit circle are simply the distance around. And remember that the distance around a circle is always going to be 2 pi units if you're dealing with the unit circle.